guys. Welcome back. This is season two of the Skinny Truth Podcast. We took a little bit of a hiatus this summer. Uh, just a lot going on. Do you do anything fun, Dr. Roller? We did. We uh, we did a lot um, this summer. We we're soon to be all over the place, but we also were sending a kid off to college, our first one off to college. So we kind of we kind of tried to blow it out this summer and you know, we only have three, you have four. <laughs> so. I know, but like every other week, I'm like, oh, he's on vacation again. Oh, he's on vacation again. <laughs> I, just had sh- I shortened my work weeks. That's what I... Yeah, shorten your work weeks. There you go. Uh, but we're so excited to be back and dive into another season. Um, I know a lot of you guys were asking where we've been, so we're back. Um, and today we are going to dive in, start off the season talking about obesity and the impacts it has on women's health. Um, because I think 85% of bariatric patients, if I quote me, if I'm wrong, Dr. Roller are women. Yes. 75 to 85. Um, absolutely. And so, and it seems to have a disproportionate impact obesity on women. Like it's, it tends to be more dangerous for Mm -hmm. women. So I think it's a great topic, especially since women tend to, um, have, you know, seek out help more often. So, right. For sure. So we'll dive into that, but today's podcast is sponsored by one of my favorite brands, Flav City. Um, Flav City smoothies have become a daily must for me. I have one every single day. If you follow me on Instagram, you know. Um, And smoothies typically have so many different ingredients that you have to have stocked in your kitchen. But the awesome thing about Flav City is that you can get all of those ingredients that you would use in a smoothie, protein powder, collagen, fruit, all in one scoop plus your milk or water. You get 25 grams of whey protein, 10 grams of grass-fed collagen with good, clean ingredients, and it's sweetened with monk fruit and stevia. Um, Flav City was so generous to give us a code as well for our listeners. So if you use code Laura F, you will save 15% off site-wide on Flav City. I think we're ready to dive in. Okay, so I'm going to introduce our, our guest, and I think we're going to try to do <laughs> a lot more of that this this uh, season. and uh, More guests. More guests, yes. that is. And try to also find some controversial or topics. stimulating topics. Yes. That, <laughs> yes. There right. you go. So, That's a better. Yeah. That's a better so, word. <laughs> yeah. Um, just, you know, because we're, I think we've covered the basics in season one, and now I think we can right. we can branch out. And we have so many people that watch those episodes. They're yeah. great uh, foundation building blocks for those getting ready for surgery or after surgery. So right. our special guest today is someone I've known for a long time. <laughs> this is Dr. Kristen Roller. And Hello. Yeah. She's hi. board certified in family medicine and obesity medicine. And yeah. we have worked together for the last 17 years at Roller Weight wow. Loss and Advanced Surgery. Yeah. And, and you're still married. married. It's amazing. <laughs> right? <laughs> People ask me all the time, so is he your brother or is he your husband? And I'm like, well, right. he's my husband, but right. I'll claim We're him We're together all days. the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. If it works well, I'm in the OR and she's in the office. That's, there that's you how go. it, it yeah. works well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if I ever show up to the office early, she's like, get out of my space. Why are, Why you, are you here? This is my <laughs> dance space. This is your right. dance space. Like, what are yes. you doing here? <laughs> That's funny. So she's board certified in, in all the right things, family medicine and obesity medicine. And yep. she is our bariatrician and, and sees patients on the front end getting yep. ready for surgery and then helps coordinate and manage the long-term follow-up to be sure the weight loss is appropriate, managing uh, vitamin levels and, and all nutrition. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I wanted to, we've been married for 24, 24 years. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yes. And funny story on that is I had to beg her to work with me. Yeah. She, I really wanted to be a traditional family practice doctor, like babies okay. to grandmas. Like that was kind of my plan and got here and it just w- became a little overwhelming with, you know, one baby and one baby on the way. And I was Two like, oh my schedules. gosh. I, yes. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to have a super busy husband. I've got to like, now I kind of need a part-time job and I don't know how to do yeah. all of the family medicine and part-time. And he was like, I really need you to help me with the bariatrics. And so I was like, okay, well, give it point a was, shot. I don't know anything about bariatric surgery. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, I said, time out. Are you trying to tell me you don't know anything about diabetes, high blood pressure, mm-hmm. joint pain, back pain, heart reflux. disease, reflux? 
yeah. cancer. Like, oh yeah, you're naming all, all of my that. patients. <laughs> right, yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. And I said, now you're going to get the opportunity to take people off their medicines mm -hmm. and watch them get better and recommend effective treatments, the yeah. most effective treatments. So Not just covering it up with a medication. Yeah, because yeah. you know, patients would come in and they've gained 10 pounds and now their hypertension's worse and now we're adding right. medicine or starting insulin with diabetics or we have to refer to this specialist or that specialist now. And so, and it all did seem to stem from their weight. So it's a really nice spot for me to be able to see people yeah. lose the weight, get healthy, come off medicines and do all the things that you and Luke have done. And so it's really fun. It's really rewarding. I'm super happy. I bet, yeah. And, and that was pretty convincing. And... <laughs> And I said, you don't have to take call. I'll take all the call. <laughs> oh, I was right. like, okay, like, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, sealed the deal right there. Yes. yes, for sure. You did already say that most of our patients are women. We, we are seeing an mm -hmm. increase in men over our last 17 years. We have, but it's still, it's the vast majority are women. And I would say the men that are coming are exactly what happened with you and Luke. Like my wife did it. She's running circles around me now and I have got right. to keep up or I want to feel better or she's off all her medicines or she's feeling just feeling so good. Now I want right. to do it. And so I see the increased numbers of men coming, but a lot of it's because the wives are like, I'm going first. I'm going to do something about this. Yeah. Why do you think there's more women? Because women ask for help. I mean, I think that's part of it too, but I think there's a lot more of the you know, negative stigma with obesity and women than there is right. with men. I think there it's like acceptable to be a stocky husky man, for maybe sure. more than it is acceptable for women. Or maybe we get to the certain point that we're like, I'm just kind of tired of being like this. And men are like, yeah. Oh, well, this is just how I am or how, how it I'm is. Yes. Yeah, it is because the obesity rates are not different for men. Right. Women. They're not. Um, I think a lot of it's for men. We, we really do struggle with asking for help. Um, I think that's true. I think that's part of it. And it is, I'm now to the point of, of betting the husband's steak dinners when they come <laughs> in. I was like, you'll, I promise you, you'll want to do this within the year. And he's and like, you'll be back. And then they yeah, are. I mean, I've, I've did, uh, I've got two last week and I got two this next week that are wow. the exact situation. So you know, and it can work on the reverse as well, but it's it's more often uh, women leading the men. For yeah. Sure. So mm -hmm. health and women's health in particular, it's a hot topic. And obesity is the number one driver of all these diseases. One, there's like eight or nine different areas we want to touch on real quickly on all these. And the first one is, is heart disease mm -hmm. in women. And it killed... If when you look at the most common causes of death in women, it's heart, heart, disease. heart disease is number one. That's wow. crazy to me. Yeah. One in five women that is crazy. die from heart disease. Wow. And it's the most common cause of, of death. And so like what, you know, when you're just looking at the three main causes. Like blood pressure, disease, diabetes, obesity, cholesterol, I think. And you're those big three things, but those are all due to obesity. Right. So right. you kind of start taking care of the main problem that leads to those risk factors for heart disease. Then you can really reduce the risk reduce of that risk. and reduce your risk of dying. And you know, it's yeah, you pull up any unnecessary. You Google search any of these things, and most common causes of heart disease in women, and it'll say high blood pressure, high cholesterol, mm -hmm. diabetes. Right. Okay. Things we can control. Right. But it doesn't say yeah. the number one cause is obesity the number one when it cause probably of, should. <laughs> yeah. High blood yeah. pressure. Because obesity or, is yeah. the big part and then the right. others fall under that. Yeah. You're not, so then you, if you ask the question, okay, what's the number one cause of diabetes? It's obesity. The mm -hmm. number one cause of high blood pressure, obesity, right. of high cholesterol, obesity. So it's, it's one of those things in medicine that drives me insane that we, we're not connecting the dots mm -hmm. of what what the driver of yeah. heart disease is right and so that's a, i thought that was a, a crazy fact um yeah, it is because i would have probably gone with cancer me um, too i would yeah. have said cancer you know i probably then, would have said breast cancer even like even yeah. more specifically but so then you talk that about, has just been on the rise mm -hmm. is is diabetes worse in women than men no i don't think so well, here's, here's an interesting stat. Women with diabetes have a higher risk of heart disease than men with diabetes. Really? Yeah. So 
in general, we don't think so. But uh-huh. when it comes to heart disease, right? It is. Yeah. And so there's there More are so impactful. many things. Um, you know, you get into like say the next issue, and this is something you see a ton of. What is it? Infertility. Oh, Mm -hmm. all the time. And, you know, it just really impacts ovulation and your cycles and your, you know, safety in pregnancy, having a healthy pregnancy, but not being able to get pregnant. I've I've seen Mm -hmm. so many patients that come to us for that specific reason, you know, and I'll even hear like, I don't really care about the weight loss. My husband likes me as I am. I, you know, and they're mostly 20 year olds, 20 to 30 age, age group. Um, that have struggled, been married a long time, or just have been trying and trying to be pregnant, and it just it interferes. And, and oftentimes have spent oh tens thousands of dollars, of dollars. Thousands of dollars. On infertility treatment. I right. know that hasn't worked, the and IVF, then they get the to. IUI. Mm-hmm. And I mean that's something we tell them all the time. Like you, you want to get to a health. First of all, we all, we do like to say that healthy women tend to have healthy babies. Yeah, you yeah. always say that. And obesity puts you into a high risk pregnancy category. So mm-hmm. if you are 300, 350, 400 pounds, it's not the right time to be getting pregnant, mm-hmm. but they are. And they'll seek for, I mean, that was and- me. I mean, I was, I luckily had healthy, pretty healthy pregnancies, but I was considered high risk. And I did have some issues pop up like at 37 weeks. And I had to have C-sections because of all of this. So there are, there yes. it is scary and i'm surprised that i got through it without any other complications it's i was telling josh this morning i when i'm taking a history and talking to patients about their birth history and all of that like almost every single obese patient that is considering surging that's new to our practice they've almost all had c sections mm-hmm. and it's just the obesity increases that? the rate of c sections by double like normal deliveries like percentage wise it's like 25 percent of normal weight women have c-sections 53 percent of obese patients have obese have c-sections i think from a technical standpoint you don't want to try to do a stat c-section yes that's a surgical answer like it's kind of morbidly obese patient it's a much more controlled situation to be planned and set right because Mm -hmm. if you're trying a vaginal delivery and it's you know visualization and yeah. just the logistics of it's harder. But then if, you know, the baby starts showing signs of heart cells and stress then or got, shoulder dystocia where they get stuck and, you know, then it's like, right. Oof, then things get up. really crazy. Get is, that baby out. Everything is harder to do in surgery on someone who is obese. You take mm-hmm. standard, normal things that are not usually difficult and you can, it makes it a thousand times more difficult. But I will say too, once people lose the weight, I have to talk to them about their incredibly increasing fertility fertile. because I'm like, you are going to be fertile Myrtle. I say it all the time. Right. You have to have some sort of birth control, at least for like 12 months while we're actively losing the majority of the weight. Right. And I think it's, it's more about being able to get all of your weight off than it is from a safety standpoint, from a mom or baby standpoint, if you get pregnant too early, but it is just, you have a better shot at giving all your weight off if you'll give your body time to do that. And then let's have a pregnancy and safe, healthy, normal pregnancies right. following the surgeries. Any of the surgeries can have mm-hmm. great pregnancies and it's, and you know, we does see not increase in, your risk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the roller weight loss group. I mean, I feel like I feel like they're pretty often that we see like a pregnancy announcement. They're like, guess or, what? Yes. Yeah. It's so a lot it of fun. It does. It is fun. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's, I think I've had somebody, didn't one of them name their baby Josh? <laughs> oh, I'm, no. I'm, I'm, no, I'm pretty sure. I, this is like 10 years ago. Seriously? No, I think that's oh right. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I yeah. know. You're here so, because of my doctor, Josh. Yeah. It's like, well, can we just use your husband's name? It's all right. Right. <laughs> no, they were That's both hilarious. on board for that. I know. Yeah. But those are some interesting stats. You, you double your C-section yeah. rate. Obesity increases the risk of preeclampsia, diabetes, mm-hmm. gestational diabetes, and congenital defects. Yeah. It's all increased. Well, and-, and the other one was it doubles the risk of stillbirth. Like, I almost oh can't imagine anything that's more heartbreaking. Yeah. I I just I that is one of the saddest things I think mm-hmm. is the stillbirth rate, but and it doubling doubles the rate your risk. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. That's I don't know. Yeah. yeah, these are stats from all the major academic institutions. I mean, no, mm-hmm. it's it's just 
you want to get rid of the, the weight so you can enjoy that pregnancy right. and being a mom. And so that yeah. would be my next subject is this is something else that Kristen sees, we see, but she's dealing with on the front end is just how obesity impacts motherhood. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And you've talked about that a lot. You know, what, yeah. what, what limitations you had of doing it like, does. you know, amusement parks and rides and just going to soccer games and b- sitting on the benches or the, you know, mm-hmm. fitting into the bleachers and not feeling awkward avoid... or uncomfortable. Yeah. You right. just avoid that. You and avoid it. You sit on the sidelines of life. I mean, I I mean, my kids are still fairly young, but my oldest, I mean, he's 11 and I did miss out on so many things. And he also did, I feel like, because I- Oh yeah, because you were like, I'm him. not signing you up for that. No, yeah. no way, I can't do that. We're not going to that. <laughs> like mom, we're, I, I don't want to walk be way with too a far. big group of yeah. people. And yeah. it's just, it's sad. It really does affect every aspect of your life. And it goes by so fast. I mean, we were just talking about taking our oldest to college this year. I mean, I I remember like this, it just goes by in a blink. It's so mm-hmm. fast. And I feel like people need to recognize to, you know, take charge now and, mm-hmm. and be able to. Time so, is the, yeah, the time the, is the one the commodity enemy. that you, you cannot don't get back. You don't get back. And so, and I will say, I get a lot of messages online from older people that have just done bariatric surgery, and they're like, "You are so lucky mm-hmm. that you did it when you did it, because I missed out on so much with my kids." But I, I also have true. grandparents tell me the same thing that they are they want to be more involved in their grandchildren's mm-hmm. lives. They want to be able to get on the floor, and then they can't get back up. They're getting down there right. to play Barbie or race cars or whatever, and they can't get back out of the floor. Or, yeah. you know, they're traveling. Yeah. Like you, you work hard your entire life and then you get to retire and now it's time to go see the world. And but you can't. You can't. Yeah. And so yeah. those are, I mean, that's, and, but the motherhood aspect is a, is a major one. It oh, doesn't necessarily so tie into like a medical condition, mm-hmm. but this is how it specifically impacts women. And then, you know, the next category is going to be depression. And that is mental. I was going to say, even though I mean, it then might that not, all ties in mentally, yes, for sure. And I think that's a big cause of, I mean, I will say that I think probably half of our patients come in on an antidepressant. Way more, mm-hmm. way okay. more. 75% really? are on some sort of Zoloft, Paxil, Lexapro, blah, 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 all that. Really? And I, a lot of them are looking to come off of that stuff. You know, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm a right. huge proponent of coming off all possible medications that we can. And I think that's one of those. It takes a little bit more time to come off of the antidepressants, you know, once you're kind of through the weight, the early weight loss phase and kind of settled out a little bit and your life settled out some, but I think the the psychological impacts of obesity are just, they're unmeasurable. Like, I don't Mm -hmm. know how you, you know, no one truly understands unless they've been there. I'll get a lot of times that people are like, you can be obese and happy. Like there's a lot of people that are, and I'm like, truly, I don't know (laughs) if you are morbidly obese at 400 pounds. I don't know how you truly are. Like, yeah, I just, I don't either. Being there. I just, I just don't understand. I mean, it's just like with any other ailment. I mean, you know, I had a bad back and had back surgery eight, nine years ago. I was, Mm -hmm. I was miserable. I could walk and I could work. You pretty much gave up like golfing and playing basketball with the girls on the driveway and like doing active things. Skiing was even like, and Josh loves to ski. So it really put a a stop on things that make life fun. I know. know. So my thought at that time was, I don't understand how somebody at 400 pounds could do this. Mm -hmm. Like this is not anything to look forward to. So I eventually had the surgery and got better. And well, then it starts to like, go into clothes and what you shop for and what you don't shop for and the, you don't like the clothes that'll fit and then you know then there here comes the more withdrawing behavior yes. of staying home and not yes going out and about because you don't like the way you look you don't like the way you feel you're huffing and puffing and you can't you feel like a everybody is looking, looking at, at you, you. I yes know. So, so there, it, i think the depression rates are high and i think obesity yeah, is, very high. is literally the root cause of a lot of it, um, mm-hmm. maybe not all of it, but I mean, some people have had you know some devastating things happen in their right, lives. So there's right, other reasons, right, but... Sure. but I think the anxiety component, it, they're like married. If I'll ask somebody, yes. do you have any depression or anxiety issues, and they're like, yes, both. 
both Mm -hmm. because they're depressed about their situation, but they're so anxious about not feeling like they can do anything about it or, you know, just the stress of like you were saying, people looking at you funny and then you're worried about that and you're self-conscious about it all the time and beating yourself up. And my thing was not being successful. Yeah. I was always anxious about like something being wrong with me. Like I was scared to go to the doctor because I'm like, they're going to find something that's wrong with me because I'm 400 pounds. And so a lot of mine stemmed from just like health worries because I knew. Fear of, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Something being wrong. That's a good thought. Yeah. I don't think you can downplay the psychological impact that obesity has on people. And I think that's, you know, you can, let's say you're 400 pounds, 350 pounds, you don't have any, you don't have diabetes and the high blood pressure Mm -hmm. and those Mm -hmm. things, but you can have this and this is just as bad. And that's what we see in our adolescents that have surgery. They don't necessarily have medical issues, but right they are oh, the psychological issues there are so kids strong. are cruel and they imagine. and they get beat up and i if you don't address it at some point it just it's going to carry into adulthood mm-hmm. right so, yeah another interesting area where i think women are specifically impacted by obesity is in the world of cancer oh yeah um, there's some crazy statistics there yeah so Specifically, when you think about breast cancer, so breast is one of the most common cancers in women. 13% of all women in the U.S. will get breast cancer. That's a terrifying statistic. That is, it is. Yeah. It scares me. I know. And a did. lot of these, um, so breast, ovarian, and then uterine cancer or endometrial uh-huh. cancer, which is a, a cancer of the lining of the uterus. Those are all, almost always estrogen-driven type cancers that mm-hmm. obviously you would see in women. And adipose cells or fat cells convert everything into estrogen. So it's almost like hormones that are feeding the cancers. Yes. So, So. because I remember, so estrogen is stored in fat, right? Mm -hmm. Or no? Well, so estrogen is a hormone that gets made and fat cells can turn other hormones into into Uh, it. And so it's too much estrogen. And so you'll see that in men. Um. And that's why their hormones get out of whack. But, you know, all the estrogen being around is also why women stop having regular cycles. It's almost like it kicks yourself. It treats your body like you're on birth control pill and suppressing the ovulation. And so they have the hard time ovulating. And then obviously, if you're not ovulating, you're not going to get pregnant. And so, but that's the same way these little fat cells don't just sit there and make us mad. They form, they they're a machine for increasing estrogen levels. And then you get increased risk of breast cancer, endometrial and ovarian cancer and others as well. But females specifically, that's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have a buddy that, um, he does gynecology oncology surgery and Mm -hmm. almost exclusively all of the endometrial cancers are in morbidly obese patients. Really? Yes. I mean, it is absolutely. And so, you know, you can't do anything, let's say in breast cancer about family history. You're right. That's that's something you can't change. But you can. But aren't change. those numbers relatively low? Like women with a family history of breast yes, cancer, yeah. they get like so. That's not yes. a huge group of people that have breast cancer because my mom had breast cancer, my grandma had breast. You know, it's not right. That's right. not a big number. Do you of think patients. of just like screening and detections? Mammograms are technically harder to do in big, large, dense mm-hmm. breasts. Right. Um, harder to see things, pick things up, and catch it early versus mm-hmm. in smaller, less fatty, less dense breasts. So there's some, you know, also just some logistical issues with, with, but that also feeds right back into like your fear of just being, not being able to find a disease or not being able to do a CT scan or what if you can't do this or that because of your size and then you can't find it and then you can't treat it. And then fear of going to the doctor. So you avoid going to these routine things, screenings that you should be doing. And then, so it all just kind of goes together. I know. And if you take it all the way back from cancer, you know, it all gets started back here with obesity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. And that's Go the, back to the root cause. That's the connection that we're not doing. And so yeah. uh, one more that I think is that we see a lot of um, is urinary stress incontinence. Oh, and interesting. And in particular, obesity and women. Uh-huh. And I mean, how much of a complaint of that? I would say it's very, very common. Now, pregnancies and vaginal deliveries do increase the risk of 
urinary incontinence, but then you've got right. these stretched out pelvic floor muscles that are weak and wimpy. And then you add on the chronic obesity and the weight on the pelvis trying to hold the bladder mm -hmm. and it's just nearly impossible. So I talk to patients a lot about, you know, losing the weight, you'll have better bladder control. But somebody told me the other day they were in Walmart and the adult diaper section is bigger than the baby diaper section. And I was like, oh that gosh. is unacceptable to me. Right. A, That's telling us something. Almost 50 year old female, like right. what yeah. in the world? Yeah. <laughs> and you do not have to live like that. I mean, there's other no. things we can do to treat urinary incontinence, but obesity is a huge thing that can help you or, you know, losing the weight can help you have better bladder control. Does it control. pretty much go away? After um, the weight loss? It really is significantly improved. And, okay. you know, just from a daily life, living your life of having to wear a pad or, you know, yeah. being close to the bathroom. People tell me all the time, I do not go into a place until I know where the restroom is. Or that's the wow. first thing I find. And it just yeah. impacts your daily life, life about where you yeah. go and how long you can be out. And, you know, it's not conscious about yeah. it, I'm yes. sure. Yes. And it's, and women in general don't like to talk about it and bring it up. So that's yeah. something that we, we ask, we ask okay. them, we, we bring it to, or Kristen will bring it to the, right. I mean, I talk about it, it every day. Yes. Every day. It is a topic of conversation because it's embarrassing and it's uncomfortable. And, and that's you honestly not have one to that like I that. haven't <laughs> heard a lot about. So yeah, it's interesting. You see it more with in women have had vaginal, vaginal deliveries, deliveries yeah. but, and so, Obesity in that case may not make it go away, but right. let's say you needed something done. First of all, it's going to make it a lot better when you lose yeah. weight. But mm -hmm. then if you needed some sort of surgery for it, you're at much lower risk and the surgery would be much more effective. And we've got some minimally invasive. Yeah, there's other things to do before we start on medicines or surgery. So we have things that at radiance and roller weight loss of ways to treat urinary incontinence that I talk about with patients all the time. That's okay. minimally invasive and easy and very effective. No so, cutting, you know, yeah. no surgery. And, but after, after the weight loss, you know, those are, I think the highlights, um, mm -hmm. when we talk about it and I think we're going to do another episode soon on men. Okay, and... You need to get Luke's and you need yeah. to get his opinions <laughs> yeah. on get that Luke too. That'd be good. Yeah, and it would. Because it, it brings another set of issues. Some of them are the right. same, but some of them are significantly different. And I, I right. think, you know, it's not all always just diabetes, heart disease, and, and cancer. It's like, well, how does this impact being a woman think, and a mom? Yeah, right. for sure. I think when we talk with the guys, I think we're going to hear, or I hear more about pain and mobility and limitations on being able to work or taking care mm -hmm. of the family and the home and the car and can't do the lawn and you know, all that. I think that's another, that's a huge issue just of for men. I mean, we haven't talked right. about a lot about pain, but for females, it's a big deal as well. And mobility yeah. just in general. And I, you know, I'm going to run the numbers here real quick, but Kristen usually sees somewhere between 2000 to 2,500 patients a year, somewhere mm -hmm. in that okay. evaluations wow. for weight loss surgery. And so that's a lot of people. That I mean, is a lot seen, of people. And so <laughs> she's, I mean, got to that number adds up in 17 years to almost 43,000. Yeah. So there's probably not a better expert on right. obesity it's, and it's women's firsthand. issues. Yeah, yeah. firsthand. The and, issues you know, that stem yeah. from it. I know. People come in, they're like, I know you hear this all the time. And I'm like, well, I do, but it's still very important because it's important right. to you and it's impacting your life every day in these right. specific ways. You know, the good news is, it is treatable. Yes. It is something you can do about treatable. it. Treatable. I think you have, and I think... You know, maybe Laura, you didn't have a lot of these, but they were they were coming. And I knew they were. If I yeah. didn't lose the weight, I mean, I would have been those statistics. I mean, and you didn't have to suffer no through it. Yeah, like, for right. sure. Now look at what you've done for your future and your health and your kids and your husband. Right. And... We recently had a patient that Kristen evaluated where, you know, her primary care doctor didn't support her coming to have surgery, and I know. his his comment was, and her BMI was forty eight. Oh okay, my so, gosh. Right. And it was and not supporting. You don't have enough wrong with you yet. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, I Why don't are wait we until waiting? I do. Yeah. Right. I don't want to exactly. be diabetic first. And then yes. like, why do I have to wait five more years? So, and she, she came anyway. And it's, it just shows you how smart our patients are. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially they, once they start researching and they see people yeah. like you out there and that they're like, I, okay, she can do it. I can do this. Right. So. And you would be surprised at the messages or comments I see about my doctor won't refer me. I'm like, find what? a new doctor. Yeah. <laughs> or start over and do or it just yourself. go on your own. Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, for sure. You know, your body's better than anybody. Mm-hmm. You, yes. you don't feel good. You know, what your weight. You don't right. want the bad thing to happen. And I've never understood well, I'm going to wait till I have diabetes to get rid of it. Yeah. No. I mean, it doesn't no make sense. any sense. Right. So you've got to be your own advocate. For gotta sure. Do it, guys. Yes. yes. <laughs> I preach that all the time. So yeah. it's a lot of fun to watch people um, get their lives mm-hmm. back and get healthy and then turn into rock stars like you. So oh, have gosh. babies. <laughs> and... It is. It's, a, it's an absolute yes, blast. Have the babies. Have the so, we definitely have. Well, some thanks of the best for jobs, joining so. us, yes. Dr. Roller, Dr. Kristen Absolutely. Roller. Absolutely, I was great. happy to be here. Yes. yes, good to see you too. Yes, so. and we're glad to be back for season two. All right, I said we'll have some more topics. We'll keep these um, coming, but like always, you can find us on YouTube, Spotify, the podcast channel. So please download and share and like and comment ask questions on there especially if you have For other sure. topics you want us to touch oh, on yeah, that's a good idea we really yeah. love um we check them so yeah we really love uh doing this and appreciate laura and dr Kristen and and then all our all our patients and people watching us so and you too <laughs> yes we appreciate you well, yes <laughs> all right guys well i guess okay. that'll wrap it up and we'll see you next time